Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. What's up Hotshot? Today we will be doing a 30,000 mile service on my trailer. And uh, I'll show you guys all the tools you're gonna need to do this. This is right here. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what all of this is called. Like if you, uh, if you don't know what this is, this video might be too advanced for you. But uh, there are a couple specialty tools that you'll need for this job. Um, because I'll be servicing all the bearings, re-creasing them, packing them, um, adjusting all the brakes and uh, cleaning it all up. So um, right here are new seals. When you take out the bearings you're gonna need new seals. So I got four of those. I got a can of grease and then right here is one of the specialty tools. This is a bearing packer. It is super, uh, super handy. I'll show you guys later how it works. Um, saves you a lot of time, makes greasing your bearings really easy. Um, this is a seal puller to get the old seal out. This right here is a, a brake spoon. That makes it really easy to adjust the brakes. You don't even have to take the tire off or anything. You just jack it up and you can adjust it. I'll show you guys that later too. Um, I put a breaker bar on here just in case uh, the lug nuts are uh, a little tight to get off and uh, oh it's got some WD-40 for that too. Um, yeah got some jack stands and a heavy duty jack you don't really need one this big for this job but it does come in handy and I always have pieces 2x4 that I use because you can see the crews in here you don't want that uh, damaging your equipment so I always have some 2x4s that come in pretty handy and uh, yeah, you need some cloths for this. It's a dirty job, and uh, lots of uh, lots of paper towels. This is uh, this is not going to be enough for the job. Probably need a little more than that. But all right, let's uh, let's get right to it. Trailer maintenance 101. First step: Tighten, untighten the lock nuts before you jack it all the way up. This jack. It's just sitting here, it doesn't have any pressure on it yet. I like to use one of these long breaker bars on it. And you just wanna get the pressure off a little. Obviously, I already did it, because it's coming off real easy. So once you've done that on all your tires, check the trailer up. yourself a big happy duty jack like this uh, this makes things real easy you only really need a four ton jack but I work on bigger things than this sometimes too so all right that's good enough step two So I got all the lug nuts off. Next part, you just pull off the tire. I already did the same thing on the other side. Okay, yep, got both of the tires off. Next step, you're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna pop this little disc cover off. And let's see your bearings in there. You can take a look at it. Actually, I didn't really have to do that because this whole thing has to come off. Um, but normally, if you want to inspect it, all you do is put, take that disc cover off. Okay, so here's the top off. These are kind of a pain to get off. I first used the screwdriver to try and pry behind it. That didn't work. Then I used my oil filler wrench to try and pull it off. That didn't work. So I got the chisel. And when this was still on there and it was real tight, I was able to get just behind this little, and this little lip on here and get it to uh, open up just a little bit. And after that, I could put the screwdriver in there. 
and then it came off pretty easy. But the first little part is always hard, so we'll see how this one goes. Uh, next step, I got behind this thing with the screwdriver, and it came off pretty easy. Just put it in there, and then you uh, can take this one off, so you can just do it by hand. It shouldn't be very tight. It should be. It should be tight when you, when you tighten this, but then you back off like a quarter turn. You don't want it to be too tight. Okay, the nut is off for the next part. Do you want to wear some gloves? Because of all the grease that's on here. But right now you should be able to pull this off. When you do that, the bearing in here is going to fall down. So you want to try and catch that. I can't really film it because I need two hands for it. Okay, got it pulled off. You can see the bearing, definitely got some dirty crease on it, there's some clean crease right there still, and the rest is all pretty dirty, so definitely time to, uh, to get the crease changed out in here. Also, I found this, and you can see that spring there came loose, so that's not good. Um, I'll show you guys, <coughs> sorry, I'll show you guys what it's supposed to look like on the other side. Hopefully, I don't have the same problem over there. Um, but yeah, gonna have to fix that. Okay, so here's the other side. Got to pull apart. And here on the bottom, that's, that's what it's supposed to look like. This, this little thing actually adjusts the brakes. You see how it turns? You can get to it from the back. There's an opening in here. And if you have a brake spoon, you can adjust it without, you know, doing anything other than jacking the trailer up. And you can adjust it. So this one still looks okay. Um, grease is dirty too. A little bit of water got in this one, I think. Um, I found a little bit of water in there, so definitely need to change out the grease on that. But other than that, this one looks okay. It's a little dusty. It's getting a little rusty. Kind of disappointed it looks. It looks like this after only 35,000 miles. And uh, then yeah, the other one, you can see the spring is hanging down here and there's nothing that adjusts the brakes. I think this piece just fell down when I took it off because there's no markings in my uh, in my brake drum, which is good, so I can still reuse this. But I'm going to have to get uh, a new little adjuster piece at the minimum, if not just a whole new backing plate brake setup. We'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. It actually still looks pretty good, even that spring looks okay. I think it just fell apart right as I took it. Uh, as I took it off, so I might be able to get away with just getting a new, uh, new one of those adjuster thingies. I don't know what you call them. So, yeah. Gotta go ahead and uh, change the grease in the bearings and clean this all up nicely and put this one back together at least. Okay, I got my bearing right here. I cleaned it up a little bit. Um, I got this handy dandy bearing packer. So to recrease this, you know, you clean up a little. You want to inspect it, you want to make sure there's not too much play in here. This one is still pretty good. It's a little dirty, but uh, all that old crease is going to be pushed out. Let me put it in here. Basically, how that works is you put it in there and you push down on it. And that should put all the new grease in it. Kind of hard to film it and do it one-handed, but uh, you can start to see the new crease uh, being pushed through there. That needs just a little bit more here. And um, before you're gonna tell me like, oh, well, why don't you just use the little, you know, the little circ fitting on here to crease it? Well, those are those are crap. What you end up doing if you don't take this all apart? Well, first of all, I would have never found an issue like that if I didn't take it apart and just crease it through the fitting. I would have never known how my brakes looked or anything like that so I think it's always a good idea to take it apart anyway. And the second reason is when you do use this you end up filling all of this inside of here with crease. You're not getting rid of the old crease you're just adding new crease to it. This doesn't really help and you're, you're filling this all up with crease so uh, that actually 
makes it more prone to overheat because it's now filled full of grease plus you can blow out this backing plate it's really dirty you can't really see it but our back this back seal that's what i mean you can blow this back seal out if you do that so just just get rid of the circ fitting or just you know just don't use it this this is the way you want to do it you push out the old grease and you don't put too much in and you can actually see everything that's going on and make sure everything is good to go Okay, so I cleaned this up a little. Looks a little better now. Um, these actually are self-adjusting brakes. That's where this little cable is for. And there it is. And now you can see it really, but there's a little plate that is, that is on this. And uh, that supposedly, because it keeps pressure on it, it keeps pushing these things out. So technically these are self-adjusting brakes. They don't really work very well though. Um, yeah, as you can see on that side it actually came apart completely. And then on this side, if you look real close, that, that little plate is actually not really on there where it's supposed to be. So that's not actually self-adjusting anyway. Um, but this is what it comes with from the factory. I don't like them when I have to replace the whole backing plate everything. Um, I'll get the regular non-self-adjusting ones. Um, they just hold up better. Um, I never had those fall apart like that on that. Or they always like, these ones, they always come off the little plate. Like here, it's, yeah, you can see it. That little plate there is not on there anymore. And you can put it on there, but then it just, it just goes off again. It doesn't work very well. Clean this up a little too. Um, you want one of these tools, a seal puller, so you can get the seal right here to come out, and then you can get your rear bearing to come out and clean that up. This one looks pretty good still. Um, so, gonna do the same thing, grease them in here. This is my bearing picker. And you can see on this one, this one is ready. You can see all the new grease that, that came out of there. Yeah, you do want to replace the seals on it every time you do this because you're always going to damage it when you use the, the seal puller to get it to come out of there and you gotta you gotta they have to be completely uh what am i trying to say yeah uh, you don't want any like little dents in here and stuff because you they have to make you know they have to make a good seal that's, that's the whole point of it so you do have to replace those when you take them out, but they're pretty cheap. I don't know, a couple dollars or something. So, okay, so this hub is about ready um, to be put back on there. Just need to put the seal back in, clean it all up. The bearing is back in there. I can't really see it very well with all the grease on it. Um, but I got that bearing greased and got this all cleaned out, put new grease on it. Uh, put like a deliberate amount of grease on it. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to put anything all the way down in the middle there. But in the parts where, where the bearings come in contact, um, I'm gonna put a good amount of grease on there. Um, I can't really show you how to put the new seal back on because I'm gonna need two hands for that. But you basically line it up straight on here. Make sure it's nice and flush on each side. And then just, just a hammer, you just tap it on there until it's nice and flush. And that's basically it. And then this one can go back on here. And get this one cleaned up. And uh, this one will be good to go. For the other one, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go to town and get some parts. And then, uh, yeah, who knows what the, what the other side of the trailer looks like. Um, so I might just end up taking the other side apart too, just to look at it. So I don't have to make two trips to town to get parts if I end up needing anything else but that's basically how to do it all right so i have to go all the way to the big city to try and fix this one since that bottom uh, piece right here that just the brakes came apart so what i ended up doing is buying a whole new one just in case i was going to need it because uh, they didn't sell just this piece at the at the trailer store but they did tell me to go look in their junk bin and if i found one that could work i could just pick that and uh, 
I did I picked up this backing plate you can see the brakes are completely missing on that one that they replaced for a customer but uh, I did still have uh, it still have this piece on the bottom so I took it off that one and I put it on here made a few minor adjustments as you can see it is no longer a self-adjusting brake now like this one here it has this that little cable thingy uh, that's supposed to work but that, that doesn't really work anyway so I took that off um, yeah here here's the little little cable and the, the springs and stuff that came off there and uh, I used I used this one that was, uh, that was on, on here so that's all put back together and uh, yeah, I mean, still got good brake material on it, and uh, that should work. Should work fine. So everything else is good to go here. Um, this one here is all greased up. Got the bearing greased. All I have to do is put this seal on here. So I just want to put it on there, nice and evenly, and then you tap it with a hammer, go around. Make sure it's nice and flush. And then put like this one right here when it's all ready. You want to put some grease on your axles. You want to be careful not to put any grease on here though. Because this is where your seal is going to go. So any grease you put on here, you're just going to push it into here. And it's going to fling around and you're going to get grease everywhere. You don't want that. So grease on here. No grease on this part. No grease on here. Oh. Gotta look where I point the camera. No crease on here. That's very important. So then, uh, yeah, this one's already to slide on there. I can't do it single-handed, but uh, I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. Okay, so I got the drum on. Um, the next step you do after you put that on is your uh, your outer bearing. It's gonna go in. It goes in like this. It's already in there, obviously. You want to make sure it is creased. Uh, use a copious amount of grease on this. Uh, use, use your bearing press to get all the grease like in, you know, everywhere in here. It's really hard to get it, you know, completely filled with grease if you don't have a bearing press. So I recommend getting that. And then after you're done with that, you just put all the grease over here. And, other side just make sure it's completely covered in grease basically and then you put that in there um, next step is you put your d-ring back on like so and then some will have a castle nut some will have a nut like this one here so you can spin this one on you're yeah, gonna have to use the wrench to tighten it. So just to tighten it all the way till it's nice and snug. And then you back this off a quarter turn. And then you put this on and this little thing because of the, the clip right here. And it's D-shaped, this will uh, prevent your nut from spinning. So it's important you don't over, over tighten these. You wanna tighten it all the way, but then make sure you back off a quarter turn. And then in this case, this clip will keep it in place. If you have a castle nut, there will be a little uh, little pin you slide in here that will prevent this nut from, from coming off. So. Um, let's see, that's one. Got the seal put on, so that one's ready to go to. Um, actually, in an earlier video, if you paid really close attention, there was a little bit of room here on this side, so that wasn't, that's not how it's supposed to be. I just tapped it with the hammer a little, and it's all good to go again. Lots of trains coming by today. Um, yeah, I think that is probably gonna do it. Um, I'll wait till the train is gone and now. Okay train is gone. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you guys about these seals. Um, some, I've seen people put them in like this, that's not how they go in, they go in like this one here. And the other thing is why it's so important not to put the grease on this back part here. This cuts your seal, this is where your seal ends up, it slides, it slides right on here. So if you do put any grease you know, on that part then it's gonna be behind the seal and it's gonna go 
in here and that just all the brake dust is going to get attached to it and it just creates a mess. So only put grease on this part here. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you end up putting a lot of grease on here but it, you don't need it. You also don't need to fill this seal with grease. I don't know if some people tell you to fill the seal with grease but there's no point in it. It's just this, the seal is just to prevent grease from coming out and to prevent dirt from getting in here. So there's no there's no moving parts in the seal. There's no there's no reason to grease it. And uh, some people do it with the hubcap too. I don't know. It makes no sense why you would put grease in a hubcap. But so just put grease on here. Grease the bearings. This this is the the moving part of it. And then I want to show you guys one more thing. This right here is a really handy tool, it's called a brake spoon and you can adjust your brakes with it without even having to take the tire off or anything. So um, how this works is, let me see, I can show it to you guys here, there is, there is an opening, here, let's use this one here, there is this opening and here you come in with this through the back better on this one and this right here is what you'll turn so uh, stick it in the, to the back here I don't know you can actually see it it's kind of hard to see but then you can turn see how this that's a little hard to do it one handed here my, uh, my jack stand is in the way let's see this is turning so you can do that you can go up or you can go down without ever having to take any of this apart um, when you notice that your brakes aren't working as well anymore all you have to do is jack it up you can still have the tire on here and you can spin it then you should hear a little drag from the brakes if they're properly adjusted you should hear just a little bit of drag um, also the magnet will cause a little little drag but yeah, and if that's not the case, then you know you go in with this, go a couple clicks till uh, it starts to become harder to spin, and then you can back off one click, and then you know how it's probably uh, that it's probably adjusted. So hopefully that's helpful to you guys. Uh, I didn't forget anything. Uh, yeah, last part is just putting the tire over there, so that's pretty easy. Thanks for watching. Oh, let